Welcome back. Let's uh, UV unwrap this thing. So I'm just going to split my view and change to a UV image editor, which I did with Shift F10, but you can do it with uh, this menu here as well. I'm going to go into edit mode, and it looks like I need to turn off my sharp edge display. But then I can just go in and start marking out UV seams, and you can do that with Control E. Or you can uh, use this tab here, and they're available right there. And I'm just going to go kind of by section, I think. So first one I'm going to do is a blade, and I'm just going to do a project from view. If you never used it before, it does literally what it says. It's going to take this view and just project it over to here, however it looks. So what you want to do is be looking at it straight on. And do it that way. So something like that, and then we can just kind of move on. Need to mark some seams here as well. And I think I need to do these edges. So this is probably the most complicated part of this mesh, and I can unwrap the whole thing just with a regular unwrap if I want to and you can see blender gives pretty good results if I do that but since I do a hand painted stuff I usually don't unwrap this way um, it's kinda hard to explain but this doesn't match with the pixels so if I wanted to make make like a line that goes straight through this following this uh, these edges right here I couldn't just draw it straight I'd have to curve it kind of and when you do that, it's not going to align with the pixels correctly, and it's going to get a bunch of anti-aliased edges on there. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It's really difficult to explain. So what I usually do, if I can get away with it, is I unwrap in like straight grid patterns as much as I can. You get a little bit more stretching that way, but you can usually compensate for that if you're doing projection painting. But if you're working in like an image editor, you might not want to do it that way. Um, it's kind of up to you, though. But anyway, in this case, I'm going to do it that way. And the way you do it is you use the follow active quads, which is kind of a unintuitive to use tool at first, but once you understand it, it's really easy. So what you want to do is unwrap a face, and this is going to be your active quad. And what you want to do with it is square off the corners. So I'm going to select the select two vertices, and I'm going to hit W and align auto and I'll just kind of put them in alignment. I'm just going to do this all the way around until I get a square. So that'll be my active face. And now I need to select everything else that I want to unwrap with it. And I need to deselect some of these because I want to stitch them on afterwards. Uh, this as well. And I think all the rest of this is good. So um, I want to make sure that that's the active face. So I need to reselect it, make sure it's the white one. And I'm going to hit U, follow active quads, and hit OK. And you can see I get this grid layout. And so, you know, if I wanted to do a straight line on this one, it could be straight up and down, and it wouldn't be anti-aliased or anything like that. So, um, now I need to get these pieces that I left out. And I'm just going to do a regular unwrap for those. And then I'll select everything and hit Control A to average their scale. And now I can just uh, finesse these little islands a little bit and then just stitch them on. Uh, that should be all right. And the way stitching works is you just select the vertices that you want to stitch, hit the V key as in vector, and it'll go into a modal tool. There's a bunch of options down here you can mess with, like. You can control which island moves, so I can move the big one to this little one, or the other way around. I'm going to go the other way around, and now they're stitched together. So it's, it's pretty easy to use. I'm just going to quickly go through these other ones. And there might be a faster way to do this, but I don't know. And do this last one. 
kind of scale this. Sometimes when you stitch, it kind of distorts things a little bit, so I just try to make them as close as I can beforehand. So, V, confirm. Um, I can pull this down with vertex snapping, I think. Yeah. So, that's a pretty good unwrap. And it'll everything will align nicely with the pixels and everything. Um, I can probably give this center part a little bit more uh, texture. A little bit more texture space. So something like that. And that should be good. So we can move on to the next part, which is the handle. And actually, actually I can go all the way down to this. I can use follow active quads on this again and just unwrap this whole section. And this one might be a little bit easier to understand if you didn't understand it last time. So I'm going to unwrap a face. I'm going to select the corners and align auto just to square everything out. And I'm going to hit L to select everything else, and you can see that's still the active face. And I'm just going to do U, follow active quads, OK. And what it's doing is it's just taking this active face and unwrapping everything else relative to it. Um, in this case, it didn't unwrap these outer sides correctly, or at least it didn't scale them. I don't know why it does that sometimes. I think it's the mirror modifier that messes it up. But it's not a big deal. I can just scale it in this case to compensate. Um, so that's that whole section. And, and just for a comparison, if I did a regular unwrap, it would look like that. Uh, and, and to be fair, I could cut some more seams and do it a little bit nicer, but... Um, why bother when you can just do it that way, huh? Alright, so let's do these. Um, can I do an unwrap? And eh, that's giving me distortion. That's what I figured it would do. So I'm going to do a project from view on these. And um, they seem kind of difficult because I can't... There isn't a view that I can look at them that's like straight on. But there's a feature in Blender where you can hold shift and hit numpad 7. And it will, um, I don't even know what it's called, align, align view to active. Really useful feature to know about. It's one, something that I wish I knew about a lot earlier than I did. Um, but I can take that and I can do a project from view. And this being upside down means that this is going to be upside down. So I'm going to rotate it too. And should be good. Um, and rather than meticulously doing that over and over again, I'm going to just delete these and then reduplicate this one. So 3D cursor, Shift D, R, Z, uh, what was it? 45? I'm all confused here, but 45 confirmed. Yeah, that was right. And then uh, duplicate it two more times. All right, so I'm going to move these off so they're not all the UVs aren't all stacked on top of each other. And oh, uh, this is this is something that hurts my brain. If I use L in 3D view, it's going to add to my selection. In UV image editor, it doesn't. It, it replaces selection. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Just the way Blender is sometimes, though. So, um, there's all four of them. I'm just going to scale them down quite a bit. And for the last part, I think it's the last part, um, this bottom piece, I think I'm going to apply the mirror modifier and then unwrap that all as one piece rather than just half of it. Um, so before I do that, I need to kind of pack these a little bit. I'm going to rotate that by 90. And the reason I, you know, again, the reason I unwrapped it this way is so it would align with the pixels. So I don't want to have some weird angle like this or it totally defeats the purpose. So I want to make sure it still aligns with the pixels. So I'm thinking, um, 
Maybe I can put that bottom piece right here and fit all of these in here maybe. Um, do I have the align? Yeah, I do. This is an add-on. I'll have to remember to put that in the description. Let you do align and distribute. Which one do I want? Is it this one? Yeah. So I want to use as much texture space as I can, but at the same time I want to leave some extra margins for for bleeding, you know, for texture seams and stuff for mip mapping purposes. I will uh, probably talk a little bit more about that towards the end, but um, something to keep in mind. I know when I was starting out I used to always try to pack these as tight as I could and I always ran into problems, so don't be me. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this, and then I'm going to, I think I'm just going to do a project from view. It's always the easiest. Well, it's not always the easiest, but. Um, let's see. Something like that, I think will work. And um, that's a pretty decent unwrap. Let's turn on a texture. I'm sorry about the screencast keys getting in the way of this, but um, if you have two input boxes like this, a, a neat trick you can do is you can click in one and drag down to the other one and edit them both at the same time. And let's see, make it a UV grid. Yeah, and then uh, we'll change this to texture, and it's not too shabby. I think that'll work. Um, one thing that I could do to push this a little bit further is um, let me let me paint some marks on here to show this. But this is gonna have an obvious mirroring on the texture. Let's see, I can't hardly see anything now. There we go. So I have this dot, and you can see the mirror image of it right next to it. I can actually flip the back side of these to um, hide that a little bit. So let me just mark all these so we can see what we're doing. And I'll just recolor these spikes, make them easy to see. And I'm going to double check and make sure I have these oriented correctly. Uh, and I do. Okay. Alright, so you can see that there's a mirror on all, on all of these. So what I can do is go back to view. Let me, um, let me mark some seams to make this a little bit easier to select. Can I make it all the way up to the top? Nope. I think this tool needs pre-selection highlighting. So mark seam. I'm just marking the sides if you can't really see what I'm doing. This will just make it easier so I can select just the back. So if I hit L, select all these sections. Um, so I only have the back selected, so that's all that's showing up over here. And I can uh, change this to a normalized coordinates, which just means 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 512 or whatever size I made this texture. And I'm going to move everything over by one unit, which is basically the next tile. So now if I select everything, I have the front on the texture, and then the back is just over one unit on the next tile. And this will just make it easier for me to select things. So I need to um, to fix this little mirroring problem. I can select the back UVs and I can hit Control M and then X, which is just going to mirror it on the X. And now instead of it being mirrored right next to it, it's going to be across from it. So it's still, you know, I'm still 
mirroring the texture, but from no angle do I actually see the mirror. And so that's kind of a useful thing you can do. It only works on symmetrical objects like this, though. So do the same thing on there. Red dot there. The other one's over there. Um, on the blade, I don't think I want to do it, though. Because I'm thinking, like, if this is like a crack in the blade, I want that to repeat on the other side. It just kind of makes sense to me. Um, but for these spikes, I do want to fix those. I wonder if I can just rotate them. Yeah, that'll look like it'll work. So rotate it by 180. Now they're like across from each other. Uh, but they these did get flipped upside down, so I need to rotate them individually by 180. Yeah, I can just do L and Shift R. It'll just kind of repeat last. Flip all of them up. Alright, so that should be pretty good. I can go ahead and move this these UVs back. So G, X, negative 1. Now they're back on top of each other. And I can get rid of this texture. I don't need it because when I go into texture paint mode, it's going to create one for me. So hold shift, click the X button. Um, and it will mark it with a little zero next to it. And that means it's marked for deletion in Blender terms. And I think that's it for uh, the UV unwrapping section. So next section we'll be doing, I'll be configuring a few settings for texture paint, just setting up some brush presets and things. And the video right after that, we will be laying down some base colors finally. So see you there.